Hi everybody. Well, this is a window thermometer uh, that I picked up at Walmart uh, several years ago. And this is an AccuRite brand thermometer. Uh, and unfortunately, the batteries uh, inside here went dead. Uh, so I opened it up and found out what battery number it needed. And it takes uh, an LR44. So I went on to uh, eBay and picked up this pack of, uh, looks like it's 10 batteries here, uh, for just a couple dollars, very cheap. And if you go and look for any of these numbers, uh, either an LR44 or the L1154F uh, or uh, the AG13, uh, they're all the same size battery. Uh, so any one of them will work. But this pack was cheap enough and easy, free shipping. So that's what I got. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up this thermometer and change out the batteries. So let's get started. It's actually pretty easy to do. There's only two screws, one here and one here. And all they do is hold this little plastic cover down. And then put this down. And you can get access to the battery. And if you ever notice on the bottom, there's this little plastic uh, in the center here that covers up the on off switch. So there's all the switch does, just on and off. And then also, if you're ever wondering what this little silver button is at the bottom, uh, that's the temperature sensor. I want to make sure that that's clear and accessible so that it can read temperature accurately. Battery is pretty easy to replace. It just has a little piece of plastic that's wrapped around it. So if you want to change it, you just grab the plastic, hold the board, and then pop the battery out. I'm actually going to test it real quick. My meter here, set it to DC. And it's only got 1.34 volts, so. All right, so there's the new battery. Probably unnecessary, but good idea to test it. Just to make sure you know. Well, I guess it's only a 1.5 volt battery. After playing with this thermometer a little bit more, I found out that it's actually not the battery that's causing the problem with the display not working, but it's actually this little power switch down on the bottom of the circuit board. You know, these are really cheap switches and you can even feel it in the construction when you grab it, just lightly wiggle the switch against the circuit board and you can feel just how loose and wobbly it is inside there. And actually, if I kind of press it in the right direction, which is not easy, there we go then I can get the display to turn on. It's not a reliable connection. And you see now it's not turning back on again unless I... There we go. So, you know, this is just a little outdoor thermometer and, you know, other than for shipping purposes, I really don't know why you'd want to turn this on and off. It sits mounted on a suction cup on the outside of your window uh, so I can't imagine that you would, you know, open your window in the morning, turn the switch on, check the temperature, and then say, oh, okay, now I know the temperature, and then turn the switch back off and go about your business for the day. Even on this battery, this will operate for years before the battery runs down. So my thought is that this switch is only there for shipping purposes, so they can ship it to you with the battery installed. You don't have to open it. You don't have to pull one of those plastic battery contact dividers out. You know, you just open up your package, turn on the switch, put it on your window and you're good to go. But unfortunately, these switches are made so poorly that they just don't make good contact. But that really shouldn't be a big deal as we don't need the switch anyway for the thermometer to work. So I've already tested it 
and it's these two terminals right here that the switch is making contact between so that the thermometer will operate. To make sure the thermometer is always turned on, I'm gonna make a blob joint of solder between these two contacts on this side of the board so that power is always flowing from the battery to power the device. And I can actually verify this by just taking my screwdriver and holding it right between these two contacts. Try to do it so that it can be seen. And the display turns on. There we go. So all I have to do is put a blob of solder between these two points and we'll have constant power flowing to the electronics. So let's get started. So I've already got my soldering iron warmed up. And before I do this, I'm gonna pop the battery out just to make sure we don't have any issues with heat conductivity. Now this heats up really fast. Just get a little blob of solder on the tip of the soldering iron. And then plop it right between those two points. And then you can even see the tracer line on the board itself where the power flows from here at the battery contact down to the switch and then up this other line into the electronics. So just give it a second to cool. I'm gonna pop in the new battery here. This little plastic is really handy for taking the battery out. There we go. And look at that. We have temperature reading. All right. And now the switch doesn't matter if it's on or off. It's always going to have power flowing. So time to put it back together. Okay, just make sure you don't tighten these screws too tight because they feel like if you did, you would easily strip out this plastic. So, there we go. It's all fixed. Pretty cool. Well, if you have any questions or any comments, post them below. And thanks for watching. And if you like my videos, please subscribe.